<laughs> they get my brain working. Guys, Johnny Nerd out here. Got a freezing edition on a custom e-bike build for you. Uh, this one is for a question I get asked all the time is like, hey, what's a good folding e-bike? Can you convert a folding bike into an e-bike? All the ones I see kind of suck. This is the answer right here. Well, so stick around, let's get into it. All right, all right, okay, you guys are still stuck around? Awesome. Okay, this is, let's get right into it. If you're new to this channel, I'm Johnny Nerdout. I'm a professional e-bike builder. I convert bikes into e-bikes. So I take a, a normal bike and I slap a motor, a battery, and any other accessories somebody might want on it for customers, for pay. That's what makes me a professional. So if you're into builds like this, check out my other builds, check out my other videos. If you're like curious, like what's this whole e-bike craze going on? How come everyone's so obsessed with these things? Check out my other videos. I pretty much, I have too many videos uh, all about e-bikes. So go to there. If you're into too many videos, go check out my too many videos. I know I've had comments saying, hey, I can't take you serious because your paint is peeling behind you. How can I take you serious as an e-bike builder? I don't know. So you're just gonna have to get past it. Believe me that I'm a professional e-bike builder, even though I have peeling paint behind me. Anyways, let's get into it. This is the Montague Paratrooper Pro. It folds right here. So this one's only got one folding point. This is what kind of makes it more of a normal bike. Riding it like a, like normal riding, it feels like a normal bike. A lot of other bikes, they'll have folding mechanisms up here. It'll slide up and then it'll slop down, fold down here, and then fold in. So it makes it much more compact. This one isn't quite as compact, but it's much more compact than a normal bike. How many times did I say compact there? Yeah, so this is, this is if you're looking for a normal riding bike as much as possible, this is a great candidate for that because it rides like a normal bike. Obviously, there's no seat on it. This bike was shipped to me, and they didn't want to ship the seat because it's like, you don't want to ship things you don't need to. Um, but it feels like a normal bike besides this going places where you don't want it to go. Um, it's got mechanical disc brakes. Let's see, what kind are they? I think they're, they're Tektro Navarros. Navarros? Novellas, sorry. Tektro Novellos. So they're good quality components all around. It's got Shimano Dior uh, shifters. So this is not a cheap bike by any means. You could just tell by looking at the components. So this is what you're looking for if you want something that feels solid, that's gonna ride nice and hold up over years of riding. I would suggest that this one is gonna be your best best bet. If you keep this like on a boat, this is, I imagine somebody who buys this is somebody who lives on a boat full time and it's gonna be exposed to a lot of sea salt and things like that, so just be careful with that. But you could also be a city dweller and you take this on on the train or on the bus. Uh, and you can see there's not a whole lot of place to put a battery. We could have mounted one here or even under here. The rear rack was the best solution. Normally, this is actually kind of a cool design. This, there's a little hinge here and then this folds down and then this is the kickstand essentially. So it actually rests on this. But since we're gonna have the battery on this, we got rid of that and you know the end user was like that's fine i don't really use this anyways so i put a kickstand on here a rear mounted kickstand instead so he has a still have a way to prop this bike up we've got a gear shift sensor here we've got a bbs02 motor i love the way that this was able to just come up all the way so you're not losing any ground clearance almost at all which is really nice because of the way that this geometry is it's awesome we put an integrated headlight up in here um, it's like a 200 250 lumen headlight but it runs off of the battery and it's controllable up here by the display which is a 500c color display it's my favorite display unless you need a usb output you've probably heard me say that a billion times we got a mechanical brake lever we were able to replace here on the right it's an integrated brake lever and shift unit so instead of replacing both of these we just added an inline brake cutoff in here so we're able to just repurpose this we don't need to throw that out it works fine might as well just keep using it so if you have an all-in-one shift unit like this brake shifter just buy the inline sensor i carry all this stuff on my website go to johnnynerdout.com if you want batteries motors lights all this stuff if you need help building it message me i do consultations if you're like I don't, what do i need 10 minutes 10 bucks it'll probably save you close to 100 bucks i bet and save you a lot of time worrying about like, what do I got to build? What do I gotta... This is what I do all day. I build bikes and I talk about bikes. All right, let's go do a Johnny Nerdout performance test. This is where I test this bike uh, from a standstill. 
climbing up a hill right at the, the very base of the hill, only using throttle. I don't pedal at all, and I do a perform uh, top speed test only using throttle. So you can see 28 miles an hour, it's because this is a 48 volt battery. This is a 48 volt, 17 and a half amp hour battery. It's only about 60% charged. I noticed that when I went to go there, I was like, ah, I should have charged this thing fully up. It was only at about 50 volts. Fully charged, it should be 54.4. So that extra four, four volts times 25 amps, it's an extra 100, 100 watts. So might have eked out another mile per hour or two. And it's also so freaking cold out here right now. It was hard to breathe while I was doing that 28 miles an hour. It was like, <gasps> literally it felt like, I don't know, I was gonna like atomize. Atomize? No, I was going to crystallize my lungs, maybe. I don't know, but I was gonna, I was gonna pass out from the coldness. I'm trying to think of anything else we did. So anyways, if it was warmer, this battery, you know, coldness does affect things. So if it was warmer, I'd say this thing would probably do a low 30s on a normal day. If you're in California and you're in a nice whatever, low 30s on this bike sorry i'm just so freaking cold right now what am i doing here this is this is too cold to be living people should not be living in cold weather yeah and this thing hill climbed no problem um i want to say this is about a 32 tooth in the in the rear and a 44 up front so you know you either change this out or change that out to get a better gear ratio this thing will either go higher top speed better hill climbing whatever that's why i love mid drives is that you could swap things out and you make your performance exactly how you want it to be all in i think this motor is 450 plus this is 480 i think this is about 500 so you're about a thousand bucks for adding this bike so if you already have this bike you add a thousand bucks to it and you got yourself a killer e-bike that will do 30 miles an hour and climb any hill this is what's going to separate Mid drives from hub motor bikes is the hill climbing performance and pretty much the performance all in because you're sending power from here through the chain, which a lot of people are like, oh, you're gonna break your chain all the time. And that's, oh, you don't wanna send power through the chain. That's the key. That's the essence of the mid drive. Sending the power through the chain through the gears and really getting those power. It's so smart. It's so smart. It always drives me crazy when people don't understand it, but just ride them back to back and you'll be like, holy crap, that's way different. If you're worried about this, get a better chain. Or just carry an extra chain. They're like 10 bucks. <laughs> They're cheap. Hopefully you guys uh, found this helpful and uh, stay tuned for the next video. Later.